Let's talk a little bit about polling of where you're at now. The big one that was released here in Iowa today was the Des Moines Register NBC Mediacom Iowa poll um, released at about 5 a.m. this morning. Um, we've got Donald Trump at 42%. We've got Ron DeSantis at 19%. Tim Scott at 9%. We have a couple others. But what's mentioned here is that there are numerous people with 0% who it's not less than 1% because maybe they had some votes that didn't match up to 1%, but there were specifically people who had no votes and you were on that list. How do you feel like that conveys to your current campaign, given that you are coming from, you know, out of nowhere and you're trying to get that name recognition? They had a poll in the Des Moines Registrar, you're saying, I didn't know about that, that came out today and I had zero votes. Yes. So they had some candidates where they mentioned it was 0% because it was lower than uh, 1%, but they still had some votes. And uh, among the list of people who had no votes were Larry Elder, Asa Hutchinson, and you. Really does surprise me. What was the sample size? Um, I do not have it in front of me right now, uh, but they it was all polling at the Iowa State Fair. Polling. Okay. So I don't know. They had a straw poll at the Iowa State Fair. I don't even know how we did there. Wrapping this back up, how do you expect to catch up to those front runners when the, when the race is so dense and you're trying to get that name recognition? Everything starts on the debate stage. I don't think anyone doubts that. Uh, all the stuff leading up to that, basically you're getting on the ballot. And the race for the nomination actually starts on the stage. Now I am surprised that I did not get any votes, but I would need to know the population that was sampled. If they sample like 400 people, it doesn't mean much, particularly if they sampled them at the state fair. I say that because our, in Iowa, we have only worked with the caucus. So if you're talking about the state fair, you have people coming from all over. And then on top of that, if you have people from the state fair, the percentage of people that are caucus goers is diminutive because you only have of the people going to the Iowa State Fair, what half the people are from Iowa, half are not. I don't even know if it's that high. It might be, you'd have to look at the stats. I think it might be 35% are actually from Iowa, 65% are not. And then you have to also factor in the number of people that are in the caucus in Iowa only represent 5% of the population. And because of the fact that you're working with the primary, our entire focus has been in, for the caucus goers. So the only thing that would make sense is actually to survey caucus goers or potential caucus goers. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense for the primary in Iowa. It's not like New Hampshire. New Hampshire, everybody votes. In Iowa, the only people that vote are the people in the Republican caucus. So just for reference, the, the Des Moines Register poll that came out was 406 polled um, Republican caucus goers that was conducted between August 13th and 17th. Um, and it has a plus or minus uh, 4.9 percentage points. Uh, sorry, margin of error. Pretty high. Even you have to admit that. That's really 4.9% is really high. But that even if we compare that, some of these. You could have a person at 4.9% and get a zero. But even if we compare some of these to other polls, it still has a very similar uh, ranking when you have people like Donald Trump and DeSantis polling very high up. Um, you know, I come back to when you're taking the debate stage, what is going to be your strategy trying to get that FaceTime when you're sharing the stage with so many other people who are also trying to share their plans? The strategy is to tell my plan. I think the only way that you're going to win people over is for them to get to know you. And what you have is a group of people that at this point don't know me yet. And I at least have an opportunity to present my plan and see whether or not they care. I think America does care about whether or not they are going to still be a formidable force in the future. And I think America does care about their kids. And right now you have a situation where the whole future of the country is literally at stake. When you have the government in this massive spending spree, where they are literally spending the country into oblivion, we are now spending at 130% of gross domestic product. Now that is absurd. And it puts everything at risk. 
don't we want our children to have the same opportunities that we had? I mean, I live the American dream. I'm a guy that started with nothing. But because I live in a country where anything is possible, I'm able to have this idyllic life. And I want that for my kids. And I want that for my kids' kids. And the only future that we have is a future that we make. And for us to destroy the country by this craziness that's going on doesn't make any sense. And I think America does understand that you can't constantly be reckless. And the recklessness of our spending is putting the entire country at risk. Think about how important it is that we have a good Department of Defense. Right now, you have China that has gone from a $1 trillion, $200 billion economy in the year 2000 to a $20 trillion economy today. And they are building up their armaments. They're threatening to take over Taiwan. They're in a position right now where they're spending and building up that military, and they have the technology. We, are, we were literally 800% larger than they were in, 20, in the year 2000. Now we're only 25% larger than they are. And if we don't stay on top of our technology and defense, particularly with artificial intelligence entering the picture, our whole country is at risk. Our way of life is at risk. And when you have to actually borrow money from China in order for us to pay our bills, something's wrong. So I say, we have to start recognizing that it's time for us to try to get Yankee frugal in our government. And it's not, it's reckless and we have to stop it. I think my message will resonate, but people haven't heard my message because really they've had no chance, but they will have that opportunity on that debate stage.